Ladies and gentlemen, now tuned into the motherfucking greatest. This is the Hype Reality Podcast. Listen. Hype-reality.com. Listen. Oh, I'll kill ya. Hey, welcome to the latest edition of the Hype Reality Podcast. My name is Emilio, a.k.a. Triple D, a.k.a. the Dominican Dirk Diggler, along with my co-host. Ephraim. Ephraim it is. Uh, I gotta give, Before we start anything, I want to give a special shout out to uh, our viewers in the Netherlands and our one viewer in Sri Lanka. <laughs> that person is cool as shit. And the Russian Federation. I'm not sure that means Russia or something outside of that, but yeah, kill it. Yeah, your boy. That is awesome. Um, spread the word in whatever language you speak. And yeah, man, hopefully we, get, we can get out there and uh, make some euro, euros in the Netherlands, pounds, mm, some greenbacks. <laughs> Don't pay us in Disney dollars. <laughs> Can't buy weed and pussy with Disney dollars. Like, I'm on vacation. Okay, well, we got a lot to get into. Let's talk about some shit. Hundreds of hours of testimony, forensic reports, witness interviews made public by prosecutors, insisting they gave the grand jury every piece of evidence available before it decided not to indict Wilson for shooting and killing Michael Brown. Their burden was to determine, based upon all of the evidence, if probable cause exists to believe that a crime was committed and that Darren Wilson is the person who committed that crime. So what are your thoughts about this? That he got no indictment, uh, the people are fucking losing their mind right now. Yeah. Uh, the family, like his Michael Brown's family that had to go through their first Thanksgiving without their child and a man that's not even going to fucking trial for it. Yeah, I mean, basically just dealing with all the aftermath and, you know, everyone in the media is just kind of doing what they do. And depending on what your audience is, you're kind of playing to that in New York and in Ferguson and elsewhere. <clears throat> Recently, they had the what was it? The Black Friday protest where I guess they decided they weren't going to Spend buy money. anything. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure how you measure success in that instance or what the goal is in particular. I mean, I guess the goal is not to buy anything, but beyond that, I'm not too sure. I don't think that hits on the same level. I think it's just uh, a event in the same like period of time that they could have capitalize on or just use as their vessel to some extent but i don't really think it really meant anything and i don't really think it probably got the point across by any means Nah, and it's harder to organize i mean like we're not this monolith where we can say hey all black people don't buy anything and this is what's gonna happen i mean it's just like not gonna work out in 2014 and um for something like that to really have an effect you basically need something like that to happen. I mean, don't get me wrong. Black people voted for Obama, like, at the, what, like, 97%? <laughs> like, like, I mean, if you can get that under control. Nah, that's, that's a little different, thing. man. Yeah. Jor- uh, Obama was not selling Jordans for <laughs> fucking $12. Like, you know, you can look at it however you want, but we are a materialist, materialistic world. And, pff, damn, people yeah. looking looking forward to that shit for a long time yeah and, I, and i'd hate to crush anybody's dreams that that's out there fighting and on the ground for justice but yeah black people were definitely shopping here in new york definitely. city definitely killing it with the purchases of tims and flat screens it's different because like it's a cop thing man cops don't it's fairly rare i don't know the exact statistics but like it's very rare that cops ever ever get if they get indicted that's one thing but to actually get convicted of anything even in the realm if they get yeah. convicted of in like the realm the like, they like, don't get sentenced to shit like well, like an oscar grant shit where he actually did yeah. get sentenced like he got like a couple months and then he was out like for good behavior or whatever the fuck like they don't they don't spend time in jail they there's a, take yeah. care of their own yeah is i mean and even when you're in that position there's a natural bias just same way there's a natural bias against a black man there's a natural bias for police officers people that are in you know in the grand jury or just in, in juries in general when they they take the police officer's um, word with a lot more credibility than any other citizen, particularly a young black teen. Um, <clears throat> usually, I try to stay away from social media when stuff like this happens because you kind of just know that certain people in your <laughs> on your newsfeed are going to make their rounds and say some outlandish shit. Like, oh, you know, you're my friend since middle school, but damn, you're saying some pretty borderline racist shit right now. So I don't know if I should unfriend you or what the fuck. But <laughs> makes you want to fucking hit these dudes like. Because uh, it makes you kind of question, like, 
what kind of friendship you guys really have. Like, don't get me wrong, <laughs> a lot of these r- friendships are far removed. And like, the school that we went to, it, it wouldn't strike me that a lot of these kids were more racist than they made it seem. Like, if it wasn't for football and baseball, like, I don't think they'd really give a shit or basketball about like anybody outside of their race, to be honest. But yeah, a lot of the true colors comes out in situations like these. Like. That's when Fox News is Fox News, and that's when you tell who's who. Like, <laughs> it just it, it just comes out, man. Your words, they speak for you. And like the actions, that would usually, those actions would not happen like in regular conversation. Like it would not happen, but in like this platform, right. oof, they let the words fly, and that's that's their action right there. Like by clicking enter, because they could definitely type all this stuff up. Motherfuck black people, they don't deserve shit, and then just delete. Oof, that felt good, but they post it. So yeah. That was that's an action, and it actually makes you uh, it opens your eyes to a lot of shit. But what I do find very hypocritical is that President Obama nor Eric Holder has said anything about the four black gang members who brutally uh, carjacked and took Captain Kevin Quick, a Virginia Reserve police officer, and murdered him. We did not hear them say anything about the 19-year-old New Jersey teenager, Brendan Devlin, who was gunned down by a black self-proclaimed jihadist. So I think that the country has to really get tired of this cherry-picking of these instances of their perceived social justice. You also get a lot of people that like to throw out this, these stories of white kids getting killed by black people and wonder, oh, where's the outrage? What the fuck is going on? Why do people are protesting this? And it's kind of... I find that off-putting for a lot of reasons. One, because you're assuming that a lot of these people that are out there protesting and have issue with this Michael Brown case don't care about other people getting killed, which I think is fucked up. And two, one of the big differences between a lot of these killings that you're mentioning and citing, like one, for example, with this this teen in New Jersey, Brandon Tivill, Tivlin? Brandon Tivlin, 19 years old, was killed. And everyone's wondering, oh, what the fuck's up with that? He was killed by, like, these these four black guys and you know people not giving a shit well all four of those black guys are in jail right now yeah exactly (laughs) ali muhammad brown the guy that admitted to shooting brandon tivlin he's in fucking jail he's gonna go to jail like he hasn't gone to trial or anything yet but there's not a doubt in anyone's mind and like especially in most importantly the parents mind that they're gonna get that kind of justice they deserve and that's that's how it should go honestly whenever a parent loses a child it's already terrible enough that they lost their child prematurely. But then to know that, especially at this point, to know if you're a black parent and you and your black son gets killed by a police officer, there's a pretty high percentage that you're not going to see the justice that you're so seeking in that case. This is a fucking cop. Like, as a cop. This is a guy who's supposed to be is like sworn to protect and all this other shit. You should put ego and all that other bullshit to his side because I think that ego played in a lot into his actions that night. Yeah, you're not going to let some little kid come fade you in the middle kid. of the street. In broad daylight, nah, man, now I got this gun. That was a big thing. The way they talked about, or when he talked about in in, in this interview with George Stephanopoulos. Hope I said that right. Yeah, sure. It's yeah. Fucking super Greek. <laughs> he was like saying all this shit that you know, like, oh yeah, he called me a pussy and said I wasn't gonna shoot him and this, that, and the third. Where's your gun at that point? I keep it on my right hip. Mm-hmm. I take it out and I come up, I point it at him. And when I said, I said, get back or I'm gonna shoot you. And then his response, immediately, he grabbed the top of my gun. And when he grabbed it, he said, you're too much of a to shoot me. Well, goddamn, I guess you showed him because you shot him six times, fired 12 rounds, and had plenty of chances to walk away or at least use some other method in order to subdue this dude. But to say that your only way of putting this guy down was to pop one in this guy's face, not once but twice, I I, I call it bullshit. I call it bullshit with a lot of the shit he said in his uh, interview and just as a recount of, you know, his events. I mean, obviously I wasn't there, but neither was anybody else. The only reason I think why his account is prevalent in a lot of people's minds is because Michael Brown is a black teenager. People's deep-seated fear of African-Americans. Yeah, it's the whole super Negro theory that these guys are just so fucking strong and so big and bad that that they only understand (laughs) violence and that you have to use the most extreme measures to bring these guys down. And we saw similar instances with this with the, in the Zimmerman case where they decided how, oh, Trayvon, he was so strong and so tall, whatever. Like, you have to find some way to make this unarmed black teenager look and feel so much more stronger and superior than this 28-year-old white Hispanic man with a gun. 
and show you why how that is somehow an uneven match. And ultimately what it comes down to is not being able to view them as human and not valuing their pain and just like thinking and a lot of these cops they're afraid and I get it. You know, you're out there, you see the worst in humanity. They watch football. Yeah, you know, these big black guys <laughs> just run over everybody. Yeah, and I mean, particularly like somewhere like in New York, you know, you're probably dealing with the worst of the worst in terms of people and the shit you have to see. And at the end of the day, you probably just want to go home to your family. I don't think you're, a lot of these cops are looking to go out there and just murder a black child. But at least let's start from that point. Let's be honest about what it is that we're dealing with and what you're dealing with and what we're seeing. Don't try to cloak it in, oh, well, you know, I just resorted to my training and I was as polite as possible and just that and the third. No, man, you're fucking afraid of this fucking 18 year old black kid fading you in the middle of the street and you just shot him up. You were right. It was Monday at 9 p.m. at night, which is a fucking odd time to release a decision. Usually, those things are happening during the early parts of the day. It happens 6 p.m. on a Monday mountain time, which is 9 p.m. for everybody the fuck else. Yeah. Still ridiculous time, but I guess one of the Sunday. But Yeah, a lot of people had like issues with the time that in which the prosecutor released the results. Because, one, they waited till it was nighttime, and while well, everyone's all riled up. And then he gave this fucking, like, really condescending speech about, like, the justice system and, like, how they're right and how they did everything they could and just gave this whole long fucking whirl around that we knew was going to end in, and that's why we're not going to indict him. Like, that, to me, was, like, just added more salt to the wound and just riled everybody up even more. They yeah. knew, they knew, they knew their decision, like, fucking, I'm pretty sure, like, at least a week in advance, because they were calling in the National Guard and all these other fucking forces, like, Friday, Thursday, like, right. telling business owners, A, you might want to board up your fucking, uh, your place of business, because some shit's about to go down. Yeah, and where the fuck were they? Like, all this shit they caught, like, I mean, that's, that's when, like, into the conspiracy theorists in me or whatever, <laughs> because, like, I feel like they wanted to, like get a certain message across and they knew that if they could get these black people to go and riot and do all these stupid shit or whatever then told you yeah exactly like, told you we knew they were gonna do it no one no one made these kids go out and riot and steal these things but i think a lot of people knew that if they could see these kids riot and they kind of throws everything out everything else that's legitimate out the window it plays more into that fear yeah and plus it's, it's fucking ferguson it's not a big ass city like chicago or new york city where they can't cover this whole place with the National Guard, like, no, you, you put one guy over there, you put another guy over there, and, yeah, that's, that's basically about it. <laughs> like, it's, it's a small place. Uh, we send a small 10-man unit, cover the whole town. <laughs> exactly. I think that'd be more than enough. Actually, let's cut back to six. <laughs> let's do six. Six all that adequate. All that shit, and they didn't even have enough people to cover. I don't know where the fuck they were, but they definitely weren't doing their job because a lot of people's shit got pushed in. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't get the looting part. I think that's where I get lost. Like, you lighting police cars on fire, burning government buildings, destroying government property mm. because the government has wronged you, but you go into some mom and pop shop and stealing all of their fucking oatmeal or all their goddamn honey buns or some shit doesn't really go hand in hand. Like, Mm, man, thank God they uh, they decided not to indict that man. I really need a new DVD player or something. And <laughs> kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, man. I just I don't get that part of the argument. I don't in any way, shape, or form condemn anybody that did whatever the fuck they did. Like, I feel a really I, like there's a there's a really uh, like a like a black place like a black uh, hole in my heart for what the fuck took place uh, Monday night because that decision to not even put the man on trial and just shit on everything and there's no real accountability there now it's like no one yeah here's his story we're gonna take his story over all the other people that watch this shit and we're not even gonna put him on trial anymore and that's that's about it uh we we did what we had to do and a group of 12 people i'm not sure if race took a play in this was a nine white Af uh caucasian individuals and three african-american or not caucasian individuals yeah there you go and Majority wins, I think, on these things. <laughs> so, if something told, man, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a nine to three vote. Well, like, or, go back to like what you saying about Darren Wilson's story. Like, to me, like again, too many holes. My fucking bullshit meter is like flying off the the hinges. Like the idea that this, you know, this cop in fully dressed in uniform in his police cruiser sees these black teenagers and goes, oh, you know, you guys might want to get out the street. You know, it's a little dangerous and blah blah blah. And that kid's exact response is. Man, fuck you, motherfucker. Like, like, who the fuck, like, I mean, maybe it's, maybe I'm, like, not giving dangerous black youth enough credit 
<laughs> for the shit that goes on. I mean, I'm not. I haven't. Maybe I haven't listened to enough Chief Keith. <laughs> exactly. Maybe I'm not from that vein. I haven't listened to enough Little Dirk. But I just find it hard to believe, especially after I committed an alleged crime. If I see a police officer, my instinct is not going to be let me go show those guys what's up. I'm going to be like, okay, cool. See you later. Let me get the fuck out of here. My butthole will be super tight. Yeah, exactly. On some like super, I'm not getting fucking caught today. I can't do no time (laughs) type shit. Like I wouldn't be on some like, you want to get me? I ain't scared of you, you little bitch ass. (laughs) And then I like that he responds to this cop this way. I'm about mine. (laughs) He goes and starts pummeling him to basically to death is what he was trying to imply. I had reached out my window with my right hand to grab onto his forearm because I was going to try and move him back and get out of the car to where I'm no longer trapped. And when I felt it, I just felt the immense power that he had. I mean, the way I've described it is it was like a five-year-old holding on to Hulk Hogan. That's just how big this man was. Hulk Hogan? He was very large. Very powerful man. I don't buy this shit at all. But again, it goes back to what I was saying about this super Negro theory, man. Like, the only reason people even give this shit even a notion of, you know, legitimacy is because he's this big, black teenager. (laughs) Like, that's the only way this can be possible. And that reason alone should have been enough to say, hey, let's just take this shit to trial so we can actually push him on these issues and see what that comes up. But now that they decided that there's no reason to in, in, even indict him, we won't really know the truth or get to get a chance in a very transparent way to see why he said this occurred and what other options were there. Like There I mean, are there half like, you know, I'm not a cop. I never wanted to be a cop, but <laughs> I'm only assuming after watching enough cops and enough shit on tv and movies and a uh, cousin of mine is like he's been a fucking officer in the military he's been through a number of different training uh exercises and blah blah, blah. and I, he's told me a number of things and one of them was like there's like there's procedure there's certain protocol there's certain things that you kind of cross off this list like what to do what not to do if this doesn't work you do that kind of shit and i'm assuming putting six bullets in this big ass dude supposedly array of bullets at certain times uh, uh, according to his conversation with uh, Stephanopoulos or god damn we're gonna butcher that guy's name all day but during <laughs> short that, guy on yeah the guy on this Good Morning America or one of, shows, yeah. one of them fucking morning shows anyhow I don't watch and uh, he was saying that he let off an array of bullets and that did not stop this man like so he charged at him again. After letting off an array of bullets, this guy was like, you know what? Obviously, they don't have an effect on me. I'm going to run at him even more. And then when I get him, oh, man, I'm going to fuck this guy up. And that's when he decided to let off another array of bullets, one of which f- entered his skull and killed him and laid him out on the street with everybody around to watch this uh, For event. four hours. Exactly. This all, this all played out the way that I'm assuming no mother or father would have wanted their son to go out. And it sucks because it sounds like bullshit. What I would have thought, you know, again, I'm not a cop or anything, but what I would have thought is that maybe he would have aimed for the knees or maybe he would have uh, used that baton that he said he had that he couldn't use in the car, but when he got out of the car, I'm assuming he could have used that to some extent. Any combination of just not killing this fucking kid. Remember, kid, not an adult, not somebody that committed some heinous crime. This guy... Stole like $4 worth of shit and he strong armed some Hindu guy. Like, this is not yeah, something that you that would. That guy's m- sword got fucked up bad. Like, oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Fuck yeah. I hope it did. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't say that. Like, he didn't do anything wrong. Like, he it's didn't... not his fault at all. Like, yeah. nothing happened to him. Like, besides him calling the cops, he did what he was supposed to do. Right. But I just think that that's not something you lose your life for. Mm-hmm. And that's not something that, as I don't know this Mike Brown person, but I'm assuming any person with any kind of sense wouldn't have put his life on the line to be like, I didn't do that. I didn't steal these, uh, this pack of shit that's already in my hand, supposedly, because he had it in his hand the whole time he was whooping this dude's ass, supposedly. Yeah. And I just think all these other uh, measures should have been exercised before, you know what? Uh, bullets are not having any effect on this guy. Let's do some more. Let's throw some more bullets at him. Eventually this monkey will go down or this fucking silverback or whatever monster they want to paint him as. It's yeah, just, he called him a demon. He said yeah. he had this- Angry look in his face, called him a demon. But that's that's the point. Like a lot of these kids, and I would keep saying the word kid because that's how that's what they are. And even though when they show these shits on Fox News or any other like little conservative media, they try to paint them as these men and these grown menacing figures. Like no, these are fucking kids. And but the point is that these black kids don't get the opportunity to be kids because they're not viewed as kids by the eyes of the law. Like their weight and their height become these liabilities and it adds to their 
their myth and mystique of them being these like mis- fucking monsters that can beat the shit out of you know ten men at once. You know the same thing happened with that that twelve year old kid who was shot in Ohio. A patrol car arrives at the scene, and seconds later, shots fired, male down, um, black male, maybe twenty. Tamir Rice, who was 12 years old, died later in hospital. 20 years old? Motherfucker's 12 years old. (laughs) Like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, don't be wrong. I know some kids look grown for their age. But there's a huge fucking gap between 12 and 20. But that's how they treat them. They're not talk- he's not talking to him like a 12-year-old misguided youth. He's talking to him like he's a grown fucking man. And that's how and people pick up on that. And that's a lot and of people. And I think experience. a lot of that is like this fucking I think with a lot of these cops is like a big, you know, fucking dick swinging contest. Like they have this ego behind them like, you know what? I told you something. If you're not going to do it, I'm going to enforce my will to some extent. Right. And like I think it's almost like like hunting in nature or some shit. Like you want to take out the biggest kill possible. Like I want to take out a fucking bear. Or a lion, right. or shit. If I can get me a fucking Sasquatch, I'm gonna kill that thing too. That's a big trophy you have. If they go back to the force, like, hey man, especially because that force has a fucking less than five percent uh, non-Caucasian minority. Like, mm. I think like everybody there, exception of like three people who are African American, they got one Asian guy or some shit. Don Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. He goes back to the office. I got into a scuffle with a black guy. I'm gonna say I'm able to walk tomorrow. Can't say the same for him. Oh, way to go, Darren. Good job, buddy. Way to go. Like, if he takes down, like, if he beats this or whatever the case is, like, this is a whole ego factor. So when that kid, if he said the shit that he said, which all sounds like something that he took out of a book or something, of, like, how black kids are supposed to talk or some shit, not how black kids actually talk, Mm. he called me, he said I was too pussy to shoot this gun. I was too pussy to do this. I'm a bitch. Fuck you. This and that, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming instead of being... Because this is where a lot of the professionalism goes out the line. Because mm-hmm. you stop acting like a cop and start trying to act like a fucking tough guy or some mm-hmm. shit. He was probably talking shit to this kid. And mm-hmm. he wasn't going to let some kid get the better of him. Right. Because the this kid obviously put hands on him. You saw how fucking red and jolly that kid, that guy looked after everything was said and done. No cuts. Am I right? Was there yeah, any cuts? Any abrasions? Cut. Definitely wasn't as bad as people made out to seem. Like, yeah. The initial report was like his fucking eye socket was fucking battered in. I don't know. You watch a lot of boxing. Like, you know how fucking Margarito's eye looked after Cotto put the bricks on him. Or was it Cotto? Or? Cotto and Pacquiao. Initially yeah, Cotto it was and Pacquiao, Pacquiao yeah. then it was Cotto. Yeah, like that's basically what they were saying happened to Darren Wilson. So nowhere near as bad as that. So get the fuck out of here. But I yeah, you're right. It's, it's whole like die. It's the it's the dire comply attitude. Like these police officers and they don't want to like give an inch on their authority. So it's like, no, I'm up here and you're down here and I'm not going to come down and meet you halfway. Yeah, you got to fucking listen to what I got to say or that's your ass. And that's that's basically it. So, I just I don't I just uh, it's just sad. I think it's all the whole thing is just sad. He got paid like six figures for that ABC interview. He's he's gonna be okay for a little bit. Uh, he's married, got a kid on the way. The kid already happened. Oh really? The kid happened during the whole damn string of events. So during the time. Like, it's almost like he thought he was going to go down. Like, he got married. He had a kid. He went on a honeymoon. He did all this. She got all that shit out of the system, out of the way. He's like, hey, man, I think he knew he was guilty. But, you know, good old Popo, we got your back, bro. You ain't going to do shit. You serious, man? I, I shot the shit out of this guy. Nah. I didn't see anything. You didn't see anything. I ain't going to say shit. You better not say shit. And we're good. Yeah, no and again, and again, I just want to, you know, Again, I just want to reiterate, obviously I wasn't there. No one else was really there. I'm not saying the way that Darren Wilson said the shit played out didn't happen. I just say it's pretty fucking unbelievable. And the fact that it is, is enough that it should have went to trial. And I, I guarantee you would not have seen half the shit we've seen in terms of the looting and rioting and the outrage if at the very least they would have indicted this guy. And I, based on the stuff I've seen, there's more than enough reason to indict him, but you know, whatever. Hopefully, some form of justice go- comes out of this, and we can move on. Now that other breaking news about Ray Rice. Rice has won the appeal of his indefinite suspension by the NFL. The players' union says the former Ravens running back suspension has been lifted immediately. That looks like Mr. Ray Rice will be running that football sometime soon. Good yeah. God! Everybody loves a comeback. Oh God. 
Nice, too. Everybody loves that someone to get one over on the man. Somebody wants to, you know what? The system can't bring you down. My God, it is so easy to defy the laws of man when you can run a football or dunk a basketball or hit a fucking baseball. It's like all of a sudden, all of this shit, like the minute he hits that football field again, all this shit's going to be washed away. Like, man, he did punch the shit out of his wife. But, man, he ran that ball like 70 yards. Shit, that's <laughs> something to talk about, man. Like, yeah, let's, you know, that's in the past. This is the now. There's so many ways to kind of just, like, forgive and forget and mostly forget. It's ridiculous. I think it really only happens if you have like some kind of position. If if you're an entertainer and you're somehow in the media, yeah. like if you if this is like Ray Rice, the garbage man, he would be in jail right now. <laughs> but because he's Ray Rice, the football player, and somehow we translate his excellence on the field to him as a person, and we're right. able to somehow forgive that person of what they did. We do it all the time. We've done it, you know, with all types of celebrities, like from the from the Chris Brown to you the R. Would Kelly's. Think- that Michael Jordan is the nicest man on the planet <laughs> because of how great he was at basketball. Right. But from many eyewitness accounts, that guy's a total dick. <laughs> and it doesn't really surprise me because these people's egos are the size of Jupiter. Like, these egos are so fucking humongous. So with that guy, and he's still with his wife. Good God. And that with that attitude, it doesn't really surprise me that someone like Bill Cosby, if he did rape all these women, is – was able to get away with it for as long as he has because his persona is so strong as this nice fucking guy, father of America. It only makes sense that he would get away with that stuff. Because anyway. most people, their common, um, their belief system would be, why would he do that? He can get pussy all day. These girls should be lining up. You know how much shit is thrown at him, blah, 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 blah. Like, Bill Cosby? Oh uh, well, actually, um, oh, you're talking, talking about Ray Rice. I'm talking about Ray Rice, but also Bill Cosby because everybody trying to fuck Bill Cosby. Hold on, hold on. Everybody's trying to fuck Bill Cosby <laughs> nah, in the man. '70s, but I don't buy that shit. That I was... don't give a shit either. I'm not saying I'm not gonna go for it, but uh, John Jones was on TMZ and he was like, they asked him, "What do you think about the whole Bill Cosby thing?" That's right. the first thing he says. But Bill Cosby, but girls are lining up to be banging him. Why is he raping these girls? Like, mm, first but, of all, interesting I, of all people, John Jones. If all people should know how he lives a double like life. John the, Jones is the biggest vagina. I he know. has like the, the, the he's, he pretty much personifies that whole double life with your persona in the media and your persona in real life. Because and when he's in front of that camera, he's a real nice guy, really like Christian like. Yeah, Christian like. But if you see that fucking what's that dude's name? Uh, uh guy with Daniel Cormier. Or, yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> he's a fucking asshole. Like, <laughs> but so if anyone wants to prove that point of someone being some way in front of that camera and in real life is, is that guy. So anyways, continue. But with the athlete part, like they believe because they do these little fucking uh PSA videos and these little outreach programs and all this shit, that they're these, you know, these great guys. These high, like you you can never strictly just put one kind of brand on someone on something that superficial. Like, all because I'm really good at my job doesn't mean I'm not a dick. Like, all because <laughs> I'm really good at something doesn't mean I'm impartial to something else. Like, it's not right. like it's beyond me to do something else. Like, nah, anybody can do anything. And the idea, like, that especially athletes for some reason, athletes get this fucking pass whenever they do some, like, fucking super horrendous fuck shit. It's just like... Shit, man, our team's gonna take a fucking beat down if we don't get him back on this field. Uh, we gotta find a way to get his ass back. Uh, give it two weeks. Now, uh, you know, we have a short memory span here in this country, or For whatever real. the case is. Like, holy god, people condone the weirdest fucking things when it comes to sports. It is fucking insane. Like, well, with that seat, though, I think it's, I think, I think it might fall more on us because we kind of put that pressure on yeah. these people. Like, we've had these these athletes, particularly in football running around the field since they're like nine, ten years old up until they get into college and get drafted. You're the man. All You're the know, man. All You're they the know man. is football. All we taught them is football. And then once we give them this pedestal, we want them to be these role models and I want to know their opinion on these issues. Like, they don't know any of this shit. A lot of these guys are dumb as shit. Like, it's not that all that surprising that it doesn't work and out the How the hell are these guys to. role models? Like, I would say over half of these guys are not faithful to their wives if they have <laughs> wives, which a majority of them do have wives. It's like mm. the minute they're in college, they get one like they get one piece of ass, and that girl is gonna boa constrict that cock until they get that fucking ring. And then after that, they make the same mistake that every other athlete does. Like, man, I am fucking killing it right now. And then something happens. They catch you cheating for like the forty eighth time. Okay. 
The forty seventh was cool, but this is I'm up. I've had it up to here. <laughs> We're done. I'm taking half your shit. Taking the kids. Taking everything. And I've been fucking your uh, uh, your cornerback the last two years. So Damn. tell Steve I said hi and I'll be there on Friday. It's it's ridiculous, but yeah, like. I would not put those guys, I would say a majority of them, as quote unquote role models. Like, mm. even the nicest looking guy, like, I'm gonna put, I'm not gonna put shame on good old Manning brothers, but it wouldn't put me past me if they've, you know, fucking tasted the other side. Like, if some, one of them, or any of these nice, like, let me see where I can go with this. <laughs> They they always put these athletes like all because they made it to this level that they're mm-hmm. like these fucking deities like that these guys are you know better people than us and it, 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 it does take a certain amount of discipline like to get that yeah. manning level like not even just on the field with your talent but just like to remain that clean keep your nose clean don't get caught up in the fucking strippers and guns and all these little shit that like the Pac Man Joneses of the world like don't be wrong those guys come okay. from two different worlds I mean, like in but football still. I don't think the nose clean and the strippers I think they 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 embrace that shit I think. Well, at least not getting caught. Like this guy, no, does, no, okay. this guy does fucking Oreo commercials and fucking like all these little stupid shits. Like he's not definitely like he's not making it rain and doing some obvious fucking rapper nigger shit, whatever. And, and the fucking like, and the fucking you know while he has his career, he's at least being smart about it in, in that sense. So you think his uh Ray, back to Ray Rice? You think his wife is getting that rowdy? Because he was ignoring her on the phone, or is it because she thinks that she's talking to some other girl on that phone? She said she didn't remember what they were fighting about. They said they were just arguing about something so small and so minuscule that she doesn't even remember. And but he was on the phone the entire time that she was bitching at him, and he, she just couldn't take it anymore. And she hit him, and then he spit on her, and she probably spit back at him. And when they got in the elevator, it was murder she wrote. Everybody makes mistakes. Um, after this whole situation, I, you would think that we lived in a country full of people who never made a mistake. I just I, I wouldn't take anybody's account. Like she stayed with him, I don't I don't I wouldn't take her account like a hundred percent. Like I think a lot of that might be fabricated to keep him in the game and keep uh, certain things. I don't know. I would hope not. I would hope that she's being completely honest. But it would not. I mean, what would you need to lie about? I mean, everything is on the tape. I mean, what the, whatever they're arguing about, they could have been arguing about him giving her herpes or some shit. Like it doesn't really matter. Like at the end of the day, is because. The reason why he got suspended was because he fucking put hands on this chick. So the context is not it's kind of irrelevant in this scenario. But I think they would try to not like cover it up, but almost cushion it. So she can mix words up like the whole like obviously they throw in the drunk thing or whatnot. Mm. And her talking about like, I don't even know what the, we were even mad about to begin with. It must have been not that serious or whatnot. And things right. just escalated. We just got out of control because we were not, you know, we were not like in control of what we were doing. Obviously, we right. were drinking, blah, blah, blah. It's like almost like they're cushioning it so that people are a little more like, ah, I've uh, been, you've been drunk before. I've been drunk before. We do stupid things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. we're getting a little crazy. Like, I, that's that's how I think it. Like, so I when she's saying. giving these, like, her her uh, her account of things and whatnot, it wouldn't surprise me if she kind of, like, kind of buffers it a bit mm. so that people also understand why, like, Oh, they just got out of hands. I understand why you're still with this guy, or why you're not like. Yeah, he's not. He's not a big asshole. Yeah, like, yeah. He's, he's not this fucking demon that yeah, you know, the video drunk. puts him out to be. Yeah. Right. Okay. I guess you're saying. But, my fucking god, I don't think any of those guys are. I would say the guys that are role models are probably those bench players. Those guys are probably the most like those guys. <laughs> they don't have all that attention. They don't have all that shine. Those guys are probably the most humble dudes. Anybody that's like in the starting five, or anybody that's like. Uh, all-star offense, been to that. Mm. Boof. If you're on the NFL and you've been to that fucking Hawaii Pro Bowl, I am not gonna look up to you for shit except for other football advice, <laughs> like how to run this or cut these corners or run these plays. Like you are the god on that. But anything outside of that fucking gridiron, I don't want to listen to shit you're saying. Like what about Tim sh- Tebow? Fuck about Tim Tebow. <laughs> <laughs> He's he kept, like again keeps his nose clean. He's Christian, if that means anything to you, he. Uh, you and I both he, know that Christian thing doesn't mean shit. I mean, his parents, what, they're like ministers and stuff? Like. Again, I don't think that doesn't mean shit. But again, if someone who has that much light on him, like, if there, if was, if Tim there was something. If Tebow beat up his wife, I would be a little more taken back, but I still. I wouldn't be like, oh, but he's such a nice Christian guy. I'd be like, shit, another one. No, nah, but my point being, like, with Tim Tebow. Can be potentially seen as a role model because of one of this persona that he has, and also there's a lot of people that hate Tim Tebow. If there was something in the closet that he had, like some kind of dirty little secret, 
it would have came out by now. Like, if he fucked some some sorority girls in UF or did something to fuck up this like image that we have of him as Tim Tebow, that shit would have came out by now. So as far as we're concerned as the public, he's basically living how he living it how he fucking talks it. You know, walking on how he talks it. So you gotta at least give him that. I would hope that that's right. I would hope, <laughs> like, I don't know this guy personally. I know a lot of people that find Jesus after they do some real heinous, horrible things. So maybe he had some fucking crazy high school experiences or maybe early college experiences and things just like oh, all of a sudden he found that that savior. And then maybe he's living that now, but he's also not playing that much football right now. And he's, <laughs> again, but on the hands. bench. <laughs> so with that argument, I'll stand by that bench player thing because he is not playing shit. So... Yeah, maybe I would believe Tim Timbo, T- <laughs> Timbo, ah, Tim Tebow. So the suspension has been lifted and Rice has been reinstated. The NFL Players Association uh, released a statement just a short time ago saying the decision is a victory for a disciplinary process that is fair and transparent. That's what they have been pushing for. An NFL spokesperson says the league accepts the ruling and there will be no further action. How long does that stigma stay on you? Like, what would you? What would it take for you or for America to forget that Ray Rice beat up his fiance the way he did? Okay, so if I am somebody who has put hands on my lover or whatever the case is and got away with it, mm-hmm. right? There's two. There's two ways to look at it. You're gonna hope that that person's like, oh shit, I fucked up this one time. Mm-hmm. This person's still with me. I hope I never do this shit again. And not even if that person's still with me, just like any female ever. Mm-hmm. You get me? You're gonna hope that you know what? That was a close one. I almost bit the bullet. I'm gonna learn from my mistakes and I'm gonna go forward. Right. And that's what any good person would do. Okay. And then on the other hand, you have someone. There's a lot of people that don't think exactly like that. Like, especially if you have this ego. If you have an ego. You, the way you act and the way you think is completely different than people that don't have a huge ego. <laughs> so there's a chance to be like, okay, well, I got away with that. Must have been that that bad after all. <laughs> and I just make sure I just don't get caught for it again, and we'll be totally fine. So either you do it in a way that you don't ever let it happen again, or you just get better at covering it up. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that he takes the fucking lesser of the two, but it wouldn't surprise me if in a year or so, or even like four years from now, everything seems like everything's fine. And then all these reports and all this shit comes out like this whole time that people have been covering up for him and all this crap. Like that wouldn't surprise me either. I would hope as a human being after this took place and that girl is still with you that you would never touch her like that again. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for the record, if it means anything to you, like Janae Rice and Ray Rice to have gone out and said that this is like the first time they've ever done anything. It's not that he's like... We have no reason. Do we have no reason to believe him? <laughs> we don't hang out with these we, people. We don't have no reason to believe <laughs> that he's a serial wife beater. Is my point though too. So it goes both ways. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's convenient for that to be the one time. Dude, Ray that Rice could tell me anything. Knock her out with the, the greatest of ease, but still. Ray Rice, Janae Rice, whatever. They could tell me anything. I don't know these fucking people. <laughs> they could tell the public anything. Man, most of people don't know their fucking personal lives. They could say anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know that Ray, Ray, Ray. Do you know Ray Rice has a small penis? That's what Janae Rice said. <laughs> I would not know because I don't know this guy. Like, they could say fucking anything, and you're gonna more likely believe them. Off of just like as a human being, I'm not gonna automatically ax or like you know fine comb whatever you tell me. I don't know these fucking people. They can tell me fucking anything. I don't fucking know. And it makes me care even less. But like I also know like I have a good under, under, like a good uh, I know how to, I have a good a strong belief of like the way my gut tells me certain things and how I read people and certain things. Like I would I would hope and pray that this guy never does anything wrong ever again. Because obviously, if there is a God, he definitely blessed this man right now with the ability to... Because that's the only thing he knows how to do is play football. Right. More than likely. Mm-hmm. So ho- like, hopefully he looks at this as a blessing somehow. Another thing, like, like, man, you've done good. And all that other good just washed out that little ounce of bad. Like, you're good, bro. Just keep going. Just keep, keep running that football. You're going to be fine. But shit. If that shit happens again, then I want to see how they fucking react. If she divorces him out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden has this fucking interview with Katie Kirk or some shit, I'm like, okay, so here's what really happened. I was like, I fucking told you. I knew it. I have no ill feelings against any of them motherfuckers. I don't care what the fuck they do. I just, I just think it's crazy that they get put to a certain standard for simply playing a sport. I think that shit is ridiculous. Something that generates a shitload of money, 
But in right or wrong, it is still a sport that should not, you know, prevent you from being disciplined and treated just like everybody else does. Yeah. I think that shit is crazy. No, I agree. You fucking assholes. We have questions now for Mickey. Thank you all very much. Question number one. What celebrity would you like to go three rounds with? Uh, Brian Calhoun. Fuck, you could line them up from now until Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many to mention. Oh, yeah. No gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking phone booth. God damn. Good American. <laughs> Great man. Great actor. Why the fuck are you fighting on Russia? Ah. Uh, when I watched that fight, it kind of reminded me of what my uncle told me like a long ass time ago when we were talking about Rocky movies. How he always believed that somehow, some way, it's every white man's fantasy to be Rocky and to beat the shit out of black people the way he did. And I think watching that Mickey Rourke fight kind of gives that little little leverage because of the way you look at this this guy squished up old face. You can tell he's having the time of his life beating the fuck out of this guy who was half Whoa. his age. Half his age. The guy was one and nine. Dude was not pressing at all. Like, in my opinion, we're talking about there was a fight that took place. It's supposed to be an exhibition fight, if I'm right. Yeah. Mickey Warwick, who's like 63, 64 years old, hasn't fought in who decades. He, just for you who don't know, he Spoiler actually alert. has fought in the past. He has a nine and two record, professional record. But nonetheless, that was back in the I think early 90s, late 80s, some shit like that. Yeah. And uh. For some fucking reason, which was not announced, like I go to uh, shout out to Ring TV, uh, Ring Magazine, Bible of Boxing. I go to that shit every day. They never said shit about this fight. They never got on Yahoo and never was on anywhere. Like, if if somebody was fighting in a professional bout and it was in their 60s, it didn't matter if you're a movie star or not. Someone's probably gonna get some attention or some shine for it because that is fucking crazy. And so he's on this undercard. For a fighter named Ruslan Provodnikov, the Siberian Rocky. Guy's fucking awesome. He fought in Russia on Friday, or whatever the case was. Ruslan Provodnikov fought an event in um, Russia, and Mickey Warwick fought an ex- ah, exhibition bout in the undercard. Mickey Warwick knocked this guy out in the second round of his first fight back in decades. Most would say, wow, what an accomplishment! That is crazy. Must have been something right out of a fucking movie because there's no fucking way that that shit played out the way it is. You have to watch the video. If you watch the video and you watch the fight, the guy had the reflexes of somebody like with, oh, damn, think of one of them, like leprosy. No, not leprosy. Uh, Parkinson's? No. (laughs) Something. The guy did not have any kind of reflexes whatsoever. The guy was super slow. His movements were not there. His hands were down most of the time. Yeah, he was waiting for an ass kicking to happen. Like it looks even more odd because, like, I, I mean, obviously, when you watch something like that in that arena, you're watching professional boxers, so your mind right. is already kind of cued into what a punch should look like in that arena. Like, I was like, I remember watching, like, damn, these guys look really fucking slow. But and I'm sure they are were really fucking slow, but it also doesn't help that they're nowhere near the peak of their physical conditioning, and they're not professional boxers by any means, and at least in my, my opinion. I mean, the other the black guy what was his name. I don't remember. Sure. Yeah, like um, he Black Blackman Blackinson, he was <laughs> one and nine. Yeah, like but I'm like, damn, these guys are moving fucking slow. But probably that's probably what it looks like when you watch two regular ass people fight. It's fucking slow as shit. It took me one of them. But he got 65. hit. He got hit on the shoulder and went down to a kidney shot. That was the first shot. And then he got hit again, like on the ass or something, and just like knocked out. Like he was done. He couldn't get up. I'm like, Get the fuck out of here. Don't get me wrong. Nope. Hey, what? No, oh, whatever. If they let me fight in that ring and they told me that guy was going to take a dive, I would be like, cool. I'm going to go in there and look real cool doing it. And I'm going to walk out there. I'm going to swagger that shit out. And I'm going to play it up. Like, who knows exactly if it was a legit fight or not. I would call bullshit on that whole thing. It is cool that he had that avenue or that arena to do such a thing. Like, that mm-hmm. is cool for him. I'm pretty sure he's like, yeah, man, I went out there one last time. I had to do it. And I beat one of those moolies. I showed him who's boss. Oh, man. Oof. I felt good to do it, too, man. You know, they they only know violence. That's all I know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, I did my thing, and now I could ride into the sunset. I never have to worry about fighting again because I won that last one. I did it in front of millions of people or hundreds of people. Well, I'm pretty sure millions of people have watched it now or a good chunk of well, people. Well, I guess to play devil's advocate, like, why the fuck would he need to – if he need to get something out of his system and punch a black person in the face – 
in a boxing ring. He's a fucking A-list Hollywood actor. He can wait for the next movie script to come along and do that shit. Like, and the guy can take a dive or not really get beat up <laughs> if that was the case. I think if, if he wanted to get that out of his system, he could just wait for one of his agents, throw him a little fucking bullshit movie that some up-and-coming filmmaker wanted to make about boxing, and he could have starred in that and had his fill. But I think... Giving him the benefit of the doubt, I think that the fighter in him wants to actually test his last, great, bit of, yeah. last bit of, you know, strength And maybe that he, he had. didn't want the guy to take the fall. Maybe his promoter or maybe his <laughs> trainer or somebody's like, hey, man, hey, if this guy gets knocked the fuck out, we're going to fuck you guys' shit up. Like, that guy will never fight again. Like, this, we need somebody that's going to fall over. I'm pretty sure. Maybe Mickey Rourke didn't even know this guy was going to take a dive. I'm pretty sure after that first hit, he's like, man, I'm stronger than I thought. Yeah. Oof. Uh huh. Yeah. I hope you get up. I hope you do this again. <laughs> man, I'm gonna knock you back down. They get that old ass. This old ass some credit, man. He fucking went. He in went there. out there. I give him props because he did it in a pro avenue. Like I gave him that much. He went out there. Yeah. How old was fucking George Foreman when he knocked out Michael Moore? Forty six. Okay, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Still, in boxing years, way past his prime. Well, like, it, it says something different. It can happen. Do it in a pro arena. Like, if he did that on, on camera or some shit like that in a movie, that's scripted. This guy's actually done this shit in real life before, so for him to get that, that fucking, that feeling again, that taste again, right. it's a whole different avenue. You're a cool-ass dude. I still watch your movies and everything, but I really think that there was something very weird about that whole thing. I think that something was very odd. Whatever. It was. It's definitely worth watching. I'll go with that. Take take from it what you will. Read the comments on YouTube. You will definitely be entertaining, and you will definitely appreciate the experience. Maybe look at Mickey Work a different way. Whether you champion him or you epitomize him, whatever the case is, it's definitely worth watching. And I hope that it does not become a trend of old guys paying young black dudes to just bend over for them <laughs> and non-gay pornos. But that's all we have for today. Make sure to check us out uh, on our website, www.hype-reality.com. Uh, thank you for tuning in, streaming, listening, downloading, whatever the fuck method you use to uh, listen to this. Tune in next Monday. We'll have another one of these things. Uh, hear us talk. And again, all you people in foreign countries that I've never been to, keep listening to our shit and telling your friends to listen to this shit. Uh, yeah, leave some comments. I don't know what the hell you guys are thinking. Yeah, yeah, definitely do that. Um, and, and we'll use Google Translate or some shit. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, that's all we got for today.